I was offered $20 million to withdraw from the senatorial race and run against my friend Rashida Tlaib. This is Nasser Beydoun, a U.S. Senate candidate from Michigan who claims he was asked by pro-Israel organization APAC, American Israel Public Affairs Committee, to run against the only Palestinian American senator, Rashida Tlaib. Beydoun is the second senator who has received an offer like this. Previously, another Democratic candidate, Hill Harper, was reportedly offered $20 million by a pro-Israel lobbyist to run against Talib, an offer that Harper turned down. APAC has denied offering any money to Harper or Nasser. We are justice seekers and are unapologetically about our fight against oppressions of all forms. And colleagues, Palestinians aren't going anywhere no matter how much money you send to Israel's apartheid government. An outspoken critic of the Israeli government, Rashida Taleb is facing massive backlash from the pro-Israel political circle for speaking out against the U.S.'s policy of unconditionally supporting Israel during its current war on Palestine's Gaza. She was even censured by the U.S. House of Representatives for invoking the pro-Palestinian slogan, From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. The chant is deemed problematic by Israel and its backers in the West. When it comes to the phrase uh, that was used from, uh, from river to the sea, uh, it is div div divisive, uh, it is hurtful. But analysts say this censorship is to prevent negative sentiments of Israel from taking root. However, sponsoring a candidate to run against someone who is critical of Israel is a new tactic. I don't think something as gross and um, massive as those reported actions uh, has been the case before. That sounds like something new, but if it's true, it would be a new tactic in an old strategy. Uh, there has, for a long time, been um, strong supporters of Israel in the United States who've made a lot of political contributions. Unseating politicians critical of Israel is not the only thing the pro-Israel lobbies do. They are influential in the U.S. domestic policy and also shape how elected officials in the U.S. respond to the Israel-Palestine conflict. The biggest among these pro-Israel lobbies is APAC, which specifically operates within the U.S. and seeks to influence American politics. It emerged in the 1950s as a lobbying operation during a time when Israel's image was seen negatively in the West, especially due to its military assaults on the Palestinian population. Because of things like a massacre that Israeli uh, military forces committed in the Jordanian town of Kibya uh, in 1953 in response to an attack against um, one Israeli home in, in Israel. This, um, the, this was a very disproportionate reprisal raid, killed perhaps 69 people. This was at Kibya in 1953. This created a big diplomatic crisis for Israel because people around the world were appalled. This got a lot of publicity. And so APAC was formed by supporters of Israel in the United States who thought that they needed a, a better organized uh, lobbying operation to tell U.S. congressmen and senators why they should support Israel. APAC was not engaged in fundraising for political candidates until 2021. But it did recommend candidates it had vetted to pro-Israel donors and opposed candidates seen as critical of Israel. By the 1960s, it had helped secure U.S. weapons sales to Israel, as well as generous U.S. government assistance for Tel Aviv. Following the 1973 Arab-Israeli war, APAC increased the scale of its operations by working to boost U.S. funding of Israel and strengthening ties between the two countries. Over the decades, the pro-Israel lobby has had the strongest influence within the Democratic Party. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. The United States would have to go out and invent an Israel. U.S. support for Israel is strongly reflected in Joe Biden's current administration, which has not only failed to enforce a ceasefire in Gaza, but has also expedited an emergency $14.5 billion in military funding for Israel, while Tel Aviv pummels the besieged enclave with U.S.-funded missiles. This military support for Israel is exceptional. Why? Because of the Leaky Law, a provision that prohibits the U.S. government from militarily assisting foreign military units suspected of human rights violations. There's a special process in which Israel gets the aid, and then Israel is supposed to report on its own whether it used the aid 
uh, for any uh, human rights violations. So it's kind of a, a blatant exception for Israel. That has been the product of the long-term support for Israel in the Congress. With massive public rallies in support of Palestinians in Gaza held across the U.S., growing criticism of Washington's role in the onslaught within the Democratic Party and declining support for Israel among liberals and younger U.S. voters, Biden and the party establishment are under increasing pressure, especially from Democratic voters who don't want to vote for the party in the upcoming 2024 elections due to its failure to stop the mass killings in Gaza. I think there's a lot of uh, public concern and uh, unhappiness about the the extent of Israel's destruction uh, and violence in Gaza. And in the last, I would say, three days, the Biden administration has been trying to put a little bit of distance between itself and Israel. But with Israel killing more and more people in Gaza each and every day, it may well be too late. You know, Biden rushed after October 7th to really embrace Israel strongly. And um, it may be hard for them to change the public perception that, the, that this is Biden's war, not just Israel's war. For Beidun and other politicians being solicited by Israel lobbyists, rejecting money from pro-Israel lobbying groups not only aligns with their values, but is also earning them support of younger U.S. voters, who increasingly disapprove of Washington's ironclad support for Tel Aviv amid Israel's brutal onslaught on Gaza. APEC, keep your money in...